Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. In the previous video, we learned about how to create the filters uh, for our search page. And in this video, we will go ahead and create the Zustan store. Okay. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to our search directory and we'll create a constant for our store, which will be our store name. So we'll create a file called constants. Constants. Okay, and inside of this, we will create a constant called store name and set its value to be equal to equal under, underscore search and just export it so we can import it into our store file. Okay, so for the store file, we'll create a file called data.js. So now we'll create a file called data.js, data.js, and then we're going to create a store where we'll store the information about the filters and about the response that we receive when we hit the API uh, every time a user selects an option in the filter. Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll basically um, create a constant called default state. Okay, so we'll have default state here and default state will have REST API URL, we'll have root URL, URL filter keys, filters, filter IDs, page number, result count, number of pages, result markup and loading state uh, in form of keys of an object. So, so default state will be an object. And then I'll we'll also have the persistent state keys in case if you want to keep anything persistent, not that we'll be doing that in this particular um, tutorial, but uh, in the future, if you want to keep anything persistent, let's say if you want to persist the user's selections, then what are the things that you want to persist? If you want to persist the filters, filter keys, then you can persist them. But uh, certain things like Filters, filter IDs, these will be persistent. This can be persistent. Filter keys is also not required to be persistent. Uh, that can be impersistent, that's fine. So that's that. And then we go ahead and create the store. So to create the store, we have to, let me show you, use the function called create. Okay, and we have to pull create from the stand. And remember that we added the Zustan into Windows, right? So if you take a look at Zustan.js, we added the persist, create and stores functions. We put the persist, create and the stores constant inside of the window by pulling it from this package, right? So now we have that available in the win Windows. We'll just pull it up, okay? And then inside of this, we have... Uh, so we create a constant called store. We use the function called create to create the store. We pass all of the um, options, all of the parameters inside of persist function so that in case you want to persist some of the values, we could do that in the future. So the persist function takes two parameters. First is the initializer function and second is the options. So inside of the uh, initializer, first we'll pass the default state, which is all of these keys as an object. We spread it. We pass the initialize function, so we'll create that in a moment. We'll uh, create add filter, delete filter, load more, clear all filters, all of these functions in a moment. And then we also need the store name. So we need to import the store name from the constants that we had created. So let's do that. So import store name. Here we go. So we have the store name, which will be basically Aquila search. Okay. And then we go use the partialize function. Uh, we take state, persistent state, and then we just loop through each of the persistent state keys and return the persistent state so that we can persist some of the uh, values from here. Okay. All right. So the first function we create is the initialize function. So we'll go over here, we create the initialize function. And the job of this is basically to initialize the state. We need to get the state from the URL. So we create a function for that. Let's do that get state from URL, so we'll create a function, get state from URL. And of course, we have to also go ahead and store this get state. We have to, so now this particular store object has different methods available. We have get state, set state, so we can pull that in over here. And then we can add this store name to the window. So in case you want to access the store outside 
uh, through any other component, any other JavaScript file, we'll be able to do that because it'll be available. The store name, the store will actually be available in the window. Okay. So we've got the get state. So inside of this get state from URL, we basically pass the settings and the root URLs. Okay. So this is the initialize function, but we will get to it in some time. So let me just comment out these functions for now. Let me just show you the state first. Okay. So I'm going to comment out all of this initialize function and get state from URL. Let me just comment this out. Okay. And let's get back to basically using the store into our JavaScript file. Okay. So we'll go to our Aquila search. So on top, I'm going to say Aquila search. I'm just moving this Aquila search from here on top. And then inside of this, basically, we're going to use the state and state will be available from the store. So I'm going to pull that in. And this custom elements and HTML elements will actually be available from the windows. So I'll have to pull that in as well. So this HTML element, basically this Aquila search extends HTML element. So that'll be available in the window. And then you also have the custom elements, which we're actually using at the bottom. So we didn't include that in the previous video, but we've done that now. Okay. Now, so the store has different methods available called get state and then subscribe. So we're just using the get state to get the state from the store. And we're just pulling that store from our data file, which you already created. And then we have that available here. We're just uh, making sure it's available to us using export cons. So we're just pulling that store into this particular class. And then we're calling the method called initialize. So I'm just going to now uncomment the initialize function. Let me just close this one, close this one as well. And move this data file here. Okay, so now I will uncomment this initialize function. The job of this function is basically to get the settings and put them in the state. So I'm going to say initialize and then the search settings. Where will the search settings be available from? So remember that when we were had included this file using the um, WP register script, we'd also use the localized scripts, right? And we created an object called search settings. Now, now we do have, now we also need to pass the different filter IDs that we have available into this. So I'm going to uncomment this. And the last time in the previous video, we also added a function called get filters data. So the job of this is basically to get the filters data. And then we also want the filter IDs from that. So the job of this is basically to take the filters data and basically extract the ID as well as the value, uh, which is the slug uh, for us. Okay, so that's what we're doing over here. So we're using the get filter IDs function. I will show you how this that shape of that particular data looks like, but just to show you over here, we just take the filters data loop through it. And then as long as the slug is not empty, children's are available, children are available, and it's an array, we go ahead and create the filter IDs basically for all, all of this. Uh, so the value will be the ID and the so the key will be the ID and the value will be the slug and text. Okay, so that's just looping through different children and grandchildren and great grandchildren, etc. to get that data. I'll show you that in a moment. So that's what's happening using the WP localized script, we are making sure that there's an object that's created called search settings. And that is all everything we need like rest API URL root URL and filters IDs. And we put that over here. So search settings is an object uh, variable which automatically gets available to your index.js because we are saying that uh, make sure that this object is available to this handle and this handle is actually being used to include our search.js file. Okay, excellent. Now, if I go back to data.js, we also need to create a function called get state from URL. So let's do that. So I'm going to uncomment this function. Okay. Um, then we also need another function called set state from URL. And I'll explain all of this to you in some time. Okay, so we're going to pass the root URL to this function, which we have just created. 
and get the state from the URL, then this function is going to set the state from URL to the actual state of this store. Okay, and this is going to get results. So I'm just going to comment out the get re get re get result for now. Get state from URL takes the root URL, gets the filter keys, and then uses the current URL, and then calls the get filters from the URL to get the filter keys. Okay, so let's create this function also. So we're going to put that in the helpers.js. Search helpers.js. If it all doesn't make sense to you, I'd like you to be patient. And in some times things will be clear. Okay, so helpers. So this is your get filters from the URL. I'll, I'll explain to you what all this is doing, but I'd like you to keep your focus here for a moment. So get filters from URL. And then we also need another function called get URL with filters. So I'll add that in the helpers file. This basically gets the URL by adding the filter into it. I'll just import it on top. It's imported on top. Okay, which is great. So that's that, that's that. And I'm gonna comment out the get result for now. All right. So that's that, and uh, let's see, hopefully we don't get any errors so far, and we should be able to get the basic stuff, and comment the initialize function, and take a look, there are no errors, great. Go back to the search page, and persist is not available. Let's see why it's not available. The next thing we need to do is we also need to go to the main.js and just import the stand here import the stand file here because remember we created this the stand file but we haven't imported it so we imported that so it's available under windows okay so let's refresh and now if you take a look we go back to our index.js of under the um, search directory uh, and we just console out the state uh, you'll notice that we have the state available. You can see that we have the filter IDs, filter keys, filters, initialize function, loading number of pages, result count, all of that information. And that was actually our default state. Uh, so you take a look. We have our default state. So you've got all of that information here, right? Okay. And now we're going to also just console out the search settings. See what we have here. So we have the REST API URL filter IDs. You can see that this is the filter ID that I was talking about. So we go to assets. Uh, this is the get filter IDs function. The job of this is basically get the filters data and then construct IDs. So in this shape, just looping through the filters data and it's making sure that the key is actually the ID of that particular term and then you have the slug and the text as an object. Okay, so you have for all of the IDs for the category and then all of the IDs with the slug and text for the tags. You have the REST API URL and then you have the root URL as well, which is excellent. Okay, so that's the data we are passing. And then we're setting that in the state. Okay, the reason why if you are consoling out the state here, it's not available is because the state is going to get changed. When the state gets changed, you have to subscribe to that change. Okay, only then you'll be able to see those changes inside of the function that you pass to the subscribe function. So we'll, we'll do that in a moment, okay? All right, okay, so now that we have created the store, in the next video, we'll continue further in writing the functionalities for basically getting the data when the user clicks on one of these filters. Okay, so I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.